All right, should be working now. How are we doing, guys? Yeah, I was asking earlier. Nobody said anything and not about, about not being able to hear me, so I assumed that you could. All right. Back at it. Okay, cool. Sorry about that, guys. Did not realize it wasn't re uh, recording audio. So anyway, uh, what I was talking about there was uh, somebody mentioned Alpha 4. And uh, yes, I did see their preview screenshot of the hood. So I knew that the hood um, hull was coming with the pieces to build that. I didn't know about the Bismarck. Um, but I think that's probably one of the things that people are asking for the most. Uh, Number one, obviously, is campaign mode. Everybody wants that. Uh, the second thing, then, is uh, more variety in terms of what you can build. And what I what I would love to see them do is actually come up with pre-built ships. Like, you know, you could just select the Bismarck and then go in and edit it in, in dock if you want, something like that. And maybe they'll have that eventually. Uh, there's I haven't seen anything about Alpha 4. Uh, I know that it's supposed to be coming. It's been longer uh, between their announcement about Alpha 4 than it was uh, between when they announced Alpha 3 and when that released. So I, I would be surprised if it's not soon. I'm hoping it's soon. But I will definitely let you guys know the moment it's out. Looks like he's using Oh boy. Is the Amethyst gonna get nailed by torpedoes? Alright, you need to swing around this way, dude. Alright, I think they're safe. Oh, the Amethyst just got nailed. Ammo detonation by a four-inch gun. I saw the... I didn't see the hit itself, but I saw the... I saw the smoke light up. All right, the other thing I want to do is... Get a tight formation. That gives us an accuracy bonus. And we're going to try to nail these torpedo boats if we can. Uh, I don't believe you can. I think the only super battlesh battleship hull we have right now is Yamato. Where's everybody watching from tonight? There goes the torpedo boat. I saw those shots coming in. I had a pretty good feeling about that. Now let's see if we can take the second one. Desert Fox, formerly Flamingos, how's it going? Watching in Germany, very cool. France, ah, bonjour. I guess it'd be pretty late there now, huh? Take them out. Everything's firing on the torpedo boat right now. I think we, I think we sank it. It's gone. Bye bye. All right, both his torpedo boats are gone. He's got, for those of you who are just joining, um, I did a random battle. He's got one more light cruiser and one more torpedo boat than I do. Uh, otherwise, same number of battleships, same number of heavy cruisers. So you haven't missed a whole lot, the KGB. Uh, we just got started. This is the first, first thing I've done. Just a random mission, I believe, 1902, UK versus Germany. We're 
we're going after his battleships now. Let's take a look at these things. It's actually from probably one of his heavy cruisers. There's a crown prince. So far so good. I haven't lost any ships. We're overshooting on this guy. That might hit there. Uh, close. Would they make bigger guns than 18 inch? I would think not, because I don't think that's something that, I mean, by the time they were making, uh, they were designing 18 inch guns, battleships had, I don't want to say become obsolete, but they were no longer the most important ship on the sea. I mean, they'd been supplanted by carriers by that point. So I don't, I don't see a scenario in which there would have been larger guns than 20 inches. Yeah, they're adding the hood and the uh, and the Bismarck in the new one. Kristoff, that's my name. Although in French class in high school, I I, I didn't want to go by Kristoff. I thought it you know was too close to my own name, so I actually went by Hervé in that class. I just thought it was cool. All right, we just lost our lone torpedo boat. That's okay, not a big deal. I kind of let them do their own thing anyway. Let's see if we can nail the cone. I'm thinking maybe we ought to be firing on them with uh, with AG shells. Oh, there's a torpedo in the water. Let's see where that thing's headed. I think we should be okay. We'll wait until it gets a little closer, but I wouldn't be surprised if it goes right in between. Oh, he's going after my light cruiser now. Ooh, ammo detonation. Amethyst is done. So it's just uh, going to be up to my capital ships now. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to AG. Let's see what happens. Oh, so far so good. Although I don't know if that was an AG shot or not. That was... So now it is two heavy cruisers, two battleships versus the same plus two light cruisers, which concern me a little bit with their ability to fire torpedoes. Shannon, what's up? So far so good, not really taking any major damage from any of my capital ships. The Lutzo is uh, looking kind of rough. Four compartments flooding. I don't think that's going to enough, be enough to sink it. If we can get another one in the rear, maybe. Or in the front, I should say. That is the rear. Yeah, we got another compartment. That might be enough. So far, so good. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Come on, baby. Go, go, go. Oh, no! Oh! Just as I sank him, he got a... He just hooded the Lancaster. Oh, man. Not cool. Jacob, hello. You came just in time to watch the destruction of one of my ships from a one-shot kill. 2,500 damage. Stern extended belt ammo detonation from a five-inch shell. Ugh. I 
All right, I'm going to try to get Duncan to finish off the cone. Furry kitten, hello. I would guess Rampant Fury. I'm going to I'm going to guess no because it is called Age of Dreadnoughts. So I mean, that's just my own personal hunch. I have nothing to base that on. No, go this way. There you go. I guess they were going around the sad remains of the Lancaster. Ah, oh, this is not looking good for me. I, I was looking good until I lost that lead cruiser. Kilroy, good afternoon. Where are you that it is afternoon? Are you you must be in uh, East Asia? Or Australia? Well no, that doesn't make sense. Western US, huh? California? Come on, we need to hood one of these guys. I'm having a hard time even hitting this light cruisers right now. Cali, all right. How's the weather out there? What part of California are you in? Good night, Pavlo. This is frustrating. Howdy, howdy. How's it going, Georgia? Three kilometers away and I can't hit this guy. That's 1902 for you. gonna switch I want to try and finish off this ship Sacramento nice I haven't been to Sacramento but I was in uh, the area around Lake Tahoe um, Donner Pass that kind of area beautiful there I was there in October of last year so it was a little cool but it was still nice RST Fox you know I, I live in Northeast Ohio and we're one of the snowiest parts of America, and we've had hardly any snow this year. It's actually snowing right now, but nothing on the ground. Paul, makes sense. Paul, are you in um, you in Eastern Europe? I'm just looking at your name. It looks like maybe Croatian or Serbian, um, Slovak, I don't know. Something of that nature. Yeah, Georgia, you probably don't see much snow where you are. All right, we're going to take out this Princess Wilhelm now. Got in a couple nice 12-inch hits on it. There we go. Still, big advantage for them. We've taken out both heavy cruisers. Now we got to deal with the light cruisers. And then finally the battleships. One good HE shot with a 12 inch could take out one of these light cruisers. Serbian, okay, very cool. I'm glad you're here. My wife's, uh, part of her family's from Eastern Europe, a little further north uh, from you. Um, the old Serbian nemesis of Hungary. Oh, he 
got a couple hits on me there. The Duncan hasn't been hit yet. Oh, wow. 1100. Oh, that was earlier, probably, huh? If we can take out these light cruisers, then it becomes a basically a battleship duel. Plus, I've still got the the heavy cruiser. I am in Ohio, Eastern United States. Brandon. Ooh. This is, for those of you just joining, this is a 1902 random battle. We started with, um, each side had, I'm uh, I'm the British fighting against the Germans. Uh, both sides started with two battleships, two heavy cruisers. Uh, and then he had two light cruisers to my one and two torpedo boats to my one. Uh, and now, of course, you can see what's left. I've got my two battleships and a halfway dead heavy cruiser. And he's got two battleships and two light cruisers left. So I've sunk both his torpedo boats, both his heavy cruisers. He sank my torpedo boat, my light cruiser, and one and uh, one of my heavy cruisers. My favorite battleship. Uh, I'm partial to one that most people wouldn't say only because I have a personal connection to it. And that's the USS Wyoming. Because uh, my great-grandfather served on the USS Wyoming. Not during war, but in peacetime. Uh, he served in the late 1920s aboard the Wyoming. So that's my favorite. Uh, other than that, I, I've always been fascinated by the Bismarck. And I think part of that goes to the fact that uh, as a kid, it was one of the earliest historic movies that I watched was Sink the Bismarck. And uh, I was always fascinated by that, that movie. And just it's kind of ingrained in my mind, even as a child. As a kid, you know, that, that's how I learned history first, you know, was watching TV shows and movies. Uh, Gore Vidal's Lincoln miniseries is what got interest, me interested in the Civil War. Movies like uh, The Longest Day, uh, even The Dirty Dozen, which isn't historic necessarily, got me interested in World War II. Backseat Gamer, welcome aboard, sir. I'm assuming, sir. I shouldn't assume that, I guess. We do occasionally have women. This uh, this channel is, um, at least according to the statistics that I get, 98.7% uh, male, <laughs> which makes total sense. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's just a reality. That doesn't mean females aren't welcome. They absolutely are. Meme ships are the smallest guns in the game. All right, how are we doing here? Magdeburg and Köln, we need to take these two out. We just need one good HE hit on one of these things. Meanwhile, he's starting to nail my battleships. I want to look at the... Uh, what is my percentage? Okay, damage instability is hurting right now. My favorite ship and plane of all time. Um, plane. Oh boy. I don't know if I have one. Um, maybe B B seventeens. Only because. I, oh no! Another. <laughs> I've been hooded again. Oh, it's bad now, folks. It's bad. Um, my wife's again. Personal connections. Personal connections kind of form my opinions on a lot of things to do with history. Um, my wife's grandfather who just passed away a few years ago uh one of the most incredible men i've ever known in my life um he uh he was in a, a bomb group during world war ii uh, and they i think they flew b-17s uh out of uh, kim bolton in england during world war ii the marat and october revolution marat i'm assuming is that uh french uh, named after the dude from the French Revolution. That's kind of a cool name. I didn't realize they had one. 
Bismarck, Kilroy, you're right. It did have that look, and I think that's probably um, part of the reason why everybody thinks it's so cool. Though it didn't last very long. Backseat gamer. That's. I totally get that, and I'm, I'm sorry to hear you're unemployed. I hope that changes very soon. I, I've been where you are, uh, so I know how that feels. Right now, this kind of is my employment. I do have a day job, but this time of year, since I'm someone who speaks in schools, a lot of our events that we do are early in the school year, uh, which means this time of year it slows down quite a bit, though I am headed to Connecticut on Monday. And then um, Oklahoma later in the month. Just my two battleships left. P-51 Mustang. Nice. You know, I was kind of thinking about one of those. Like the P-51 or um, well, P-47s. But I, I hadn't really... I guess I probably don't have a favorite, at least as far as fighters go. Don't be sad it sank, be glad it esteemed, I guess, would be more accurate than sailed, but I say the same thing all the time. Oh, Backseat Gamer, I get what you're saying now. You're just saying that that much YouTube watching would indicate something an unemployed person would do. So Now I'm really impressed that you work, sleep, and still watch that much YouTube. Talvisoda, no, I have not heard of that. I've had the privilege of visiting a couple of um, a couple of battleships in my life. I've been aboard the Wisconsin, which is over in Norfolk, Virginia, uh, and then the Missouri in Hawaii uh, when I visited Pearl Harbor. That was all the way back on my honeymoon 18 years ago. Why can we not hit this ship? Oh my goodness. He's a little more spread out now. You can see I actually just about sank one of his battleships. I hadn't realized that was happening, but let's allow that to continue a little longer, huh? The Crown Prince. Let's see if we can get one more good hit on them with these 12 inch guns. He's got 11s. What's his armor like? He's got less armor too. Oh, Winter War, okay. I don't know. Uh, yes, I would recommend it. Now, um, when people ask me that question, my recommendation is um, with the caveat of First of all, in order to play it right now, it's $50 uh, to get access to the game now. I don't think the game as it currently exists is worth $50, but I think it's worth $50 to number one, get access to the game now, but number two, for what the game will become. I think once it has the campaign mode, and if the campaign mode is anything like Rule the Waves, which is kind of what I expect it to be, it will absolutely be worth that amount. So if you have the money and you can spend it, then yes, I would say absolutely. Yeah, Georgia. They do. Now they've got the uh, the rail guns, which are kind of amazing. Brigade 35, where is the North Carolina? Is that uh, in North Carolina? All right, we're getting close to taking out two of his ships, so I wouldn't count myself out on this thing yet. If I can just... There's a nice hit. I'm actually going to switch back to auto. It'll probably use HP now. Because I think we're, we've caused a lot of surface damage with the HE, but we're not going to finish them off that way. Rotini, uh, what part of the war does it focus on? Is that uh, the Eastern Front? Germany... Uh, Soviet Union, that sort of thing. Yeah, 
Okay, I'm done now. No way that the Duncan is going to take out all three of these ships, I'm afraid. Wilmington, okay, that's why I wondered if that's maybe where it was. I have never been to Wilmington. I've been all over North Carolina, but I've never been there. Oh, okay, yeah, Winter War would be Finland and the Soviets, you're right. Yeah, Kilroy, you're right. I haven't played War of Rights for a while, but I did see that they were about to get cavalry and artillery. I'm kind of excited about that. I'll probably have to reinstall it. I have it not, it's not on my hard drive at the moment because it's such a huge game that um, at the moment I just needed to free up the space. I've got external hard drives that I can back things up to when I need to, though. Army Chow Main, what is up? Glad to have you here. Yeah, it was kind of an unexpected last-minute thing. I thought I'd be with my son at soccer practice tonight, but my wife took him instead, so that freed me up to have some time to do this. Uh, so much for taking out the Crown Prince. It's... Uh gotten on top of a lot of that damage. All right, we're going to speed things up here. Just get kind of a bird's eye view. I'm just waiting to see myself get hooded again. It's happened twice now. Fighting in the uh, the early Dreadnought period is extremely frustrating because of the lack of accuracy. Appreciate that, Chow Mein. I have been aboard a carrier. You said the, the Yorktown. I assume you're talking about the carrier. Um, I have been aboard a carrier. I was uh, on the carrier that's uh, in New York City. Took my boys there a couple months ago, actually. Falzan, uh, my son plays primarily right midfielder, uh, but he's also a very good goalie. Uh, just lately, we haven't had to have him play goalie because we've got a couple of really good goalies on our team. When we won our championship a couple years ago, that was his primary position as goalie, but um, I would say right midfielder is kind of his main position now. He's, he's in his first year on a club team. They practice uh, two and a half hours twice a week and then games on the weekends usually. So we've got a game tomorrow night at 9 p.m. I can't hit anything to save my life. <laughs> Army Chow Mein. You know, I had never thought of hood as a, um, as a verb until you people started using it on my channel. <laughs> and now I can't stop. Naval Frontline, what is up? Good to have you here. You're watching my soon-to-be defeat, but we're definitely going meme ship with the next round here. I can't hit anything. I mean, it's just brutal how inaccurate I am. Oh, the USS Little Rock. Nice. I would very much like to... Oh, that one. Did he just disappear out of my view? He did. Uh, I would love to see the Texas sometime. I think that's down in uh, Galveston, Houston area. I think that's the only American dreadnought that's still in existence. All naval frontline. Cool. Um, my cousin was aboard the USS Atlanta the Cleveland class Atlanta that was sunk at Guadalcanal in 1942. I know they had an Atlanta class after that. Or am I getting those backwards? It may be that the second Atlanta was the Cleveland class. I don't remember. But anyway, Brian, hello. 
Army Chow Main, how's it going so far? What do you enjoy the most about it? Also, you can't visit it right now? How long is the Texas being repaired for, do you know? Let's speed up some more. Just not getting any hits on anything right now. All right, we're gonna we're gonna charge into him here. We're just gonna go right up in there, finish this thing off. Yeah, it makes sense that the Texas would need to be repaired. I mean, it's over 100 years old now. All right, he's got me. One more hit's probably gonna finish off the Duncan. USS Cairo, interesting. I have never seen an ironclad. I would love to do that sometime. Been listening to a fantastic uh, audiobook version of a biography of Grant. Some of you probably are aware of that if you saw my video about it. Um, I've gotten up to, I think we're at the Battle of Missionary Ridge right now. It's the same guy, uh, Ron Chernow, who wrote the famous biography of Alexander Hamilton that the uh, that the musical ended up being based on. Yeah, Army Chow Main, you're right, and hopefully uh, soon they'll uh, with the Alpha Four release, you'll be able to build more historical ships. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Let's get everything cleared off. Somebody, I don't know who it was, suggested doing a meme ship um you know what i haven't done for a while is t done a russian ship so maybe we'll do the russians we'll take 1940 technology so we're gonna kind of back up the distance here we're gonna unlock everything meme ship time uh how about the russians versus the austro-hungarians even though they wouldn't have existed anymore at this time but um rather than just a standard kind of blow everybody away meme ship let's at least give them a fighting chance uh, so we'll give them, how about, I don't know. What do you guys think? What should be the makeup of the fleet? Cause I'm going to make this thing overpowered as possible. H class battleships. That's something I'll have to try to build sometime. Six meme ships. <laughs> oh, man. Are you suggesting? Oh, you know, I've never done more than one meme ship. That would be something, wouldn't it? I don't know how well this would run if we do something like this. Two meme ships versus ten battleships. Let's do it. All of the smallest guns in the game. Because the Russians lost all their Navy battles, yeah. Two meme ships versus everything. Um, well, why don't we try two versus ten? Let's see how that goes first, and then we'll kind of go from there. All right, what's a good Russian name? Help me out. Uh, wh what do you think should be a good... Uh, of course, this is a Russian Empire, not Soviets, even though it would have been Soviets at this time. But we'll have to come up with a good name for our super battleship. You can build an H-Class in Alpha 4? Okay, that'd be cool. Alright. Money is no object. We're definitely going to use the Pagoda Tower. Let's put it in the rear. So we can get more guns up front. As many 11-inch guns as possible. I don't know if 11-inch guns are going to do a lot versus battleships of that era i don't know if they'd have enough to be able to penetrate ivan the terrible yes 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 i love it ivan the terrible it is that is the perfect russian name 
The Stalingrad's good too. Good evening, Nat. Rasputin, also very good. I like Rasputin. That'll have to be one in the future. I missed an L in terrible. There we go. Okay. On to the build here. First things first, we gotta see where we can put the barbettes. We're limited on where those can go. Petrograd, nice. Stalin is a good name, since it means steel in Russian. I mean, that that is an ideal kind of name to have. Oh yeah, we gotta remember we're gonna need funnels on this thing, so maybe we're not gonna have a barbette on the back. Secondary tower, let's go with, ah, we're gonna have to do this one. All right, we got to stick a funnel on this thing. It's going to be in the front, but it is a meme ship, so who cares? These guys are all going to just be smoked out. That's amazing. Okay. Main guns. We can go all the way up to 8, 18 uh, inch, but f let's see. 15 inch gives us 55 seconds of reload time, 83 on the 15. So uh, since we are going up against... M high number of ships the 15s actually make a lot of sense so we'll put three in the front actually i wonder about can we load it up on the sides oh we can put a couple there yeah i'm with you paul yeah, we will fill the pagoda with secondaries, don't you worry. Okay, that works. I think three inch is the biggest you can put on the pagoda, which obviously aren't going to do much against battleships, but we'll do it anyway. Because it looks cool. And you can put a couple of them on that, on that one there too. Falzan, uh, I believe they have already announced some of the things that we can expect in Alpha 4. They've actually showed a hood built, and I know they've talked about, some folks have mentioned that there's going to be a, uh, a Bismarck as well. So, um, All right, so there's that so far. Do we want some torpedo launchers on this thing or no? Um, let's go ahead and start looking at everything else on this thing. We're going to go hit high TNT, I think. Definitely super heavy shells. 27 main guns. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. That is correct. All right. Auto reload. All right. Citadel, I think we'll go turtle back. I don't know what the Russians had as far as that goes. I don't think we need anti-torpedo. Lots of weight left over. We have a, an aft weight offset we're going to have to deal with. But that shouldn't be a problem. I can throw some things on there to deal with that. We'll start with some torpedo launchers. We'll do the underwater thing. So figure we have two of these, so that means 54 main guns. Two inch pew pews. <laughs> Secondaries. We gotta find, uh, I guess it's, it's only gonna give me so much room to put those. We gotta be careful we don't get in the way of the other guns too much. Uh, it's not gonna let me put too many of those. Alright, we can put some here without affecting things because of the super firing. All right, we still need some some torpedo launchers. We'll throw some up on the front if we can here. Don't want to get in the way too much. And get some on the rear too. Funny thing is if you throw them right here, they somehow are able to actually fire. I don't know how that is, but... 
we can't really build anything past this point right here. I don't think this has casemate guns, no. All right. Let's go up to 24-inch torpedoes. Electric, so the detection range. Although, actually, I'm going to be so far away firing at this guy that what I want is actually the best torpedo range that we can get, which is going to be oxygen. Yes, Scarheart, we are doing a meme ship. All right. Now we got to look at armor. Actually, let's look at... Uh, we're only at 40% engine efficiency. That's a problem. Oh, we got to go to forced boilers. There we go. Now we're at 100. We actually didn't even do this. We could have done oil as well. I wonder if we can go to balanced. Yep, yeah, we're still good. Super catapult torpedoes, that's it. Naval Frontline, I don't know what radio would do in this case. So, oh, I do have two of them, I guess. Um, okay. I do have two ships, so that makes sense. All right, what do we want to do here? Let's get that deck armor up. Same with extended. We've got a lot of weight to, pull, uh, to fool with here. I definitely want to protect the towers for accuracy's sake. I don't care about protecting the secondaries too much. That's where we're at here. Oh, we still got an aft weight offset of 11%. Scarheart, um, yeah, that would make sense, but being that it's a meme ship, we're doing the ridiculous right now. Um, yeah, Hanson, I'm with you. I wish we had a demo for the campaign as well. <laughs> Kilroy, <laughs> see what happens when you walk away. Uh, all right, well, we're going to have to, yeah, we're going to have to probably, um, unfortunately... make a change here for the the weight offset issue uh, probably makes the most sense to remove those. Although if I go to one, I'm probably still going to have a, a weight offset issue and I'm probably going to have to remove that. All right. That's not too bad. All right. So I guess we're going to have to go down to 24 main guns on each ship. 55 belt. I think 50 is the max you can go, and I think I'd be over on weight if I did that. Yeah. We can go 30. Although I think a little more deck armor would be in order at that point. There we go. All right, I think we're good. I think this is what we will go with. I don't have a lot of protection here, but I'm not too worried about that, I guess. You know what? I'm probably better off to do that and do that this but now i've still got an issue with weight we'll drop the belt extended a little bit okay let's dive in oh wait now we've got a no we don't have a, a huge weight offset i don't know why it's saying that right now Launch! Let's do it! The USS Turtleback. No, this is the... Uh, you know, if I did an Austro-Hungarian one again... Uh, well, I wish I could do a Romanian. I'd call it Vlad the Impaler. But here we go. We're going to take the uh, Ivan the Terrible class into service. Let's get a good look at our latest meme ship. Flying the Russian flag. Excellent. All right, so it looks like he's ahead of us, which is perfect. Surprised how close these two are at the moment. Let's go ahead and speed up until we make contact. We're, I think we started out at 40,000. Lorne, what's up? Welcome, sir. 
Lauren won the uh, the giveaway contest we did. How's uh, how are things going on Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail for you, sir? Yeah, <laughs> rampant fury. Yes, uh, I'm I'm well aware of that. But this is a meme ship, so silly things like smoking out the people up here <laughs> on the bridge are not a concern on a meme ship. It does look a little like a Richelieu. You're right. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's go get a look at it. We're up against ten 1940 battleships. Austro-Hungarians. Let my ships get close. I don't want to get too close because there's ten of him and only two of me, but once I sink a few, we'll get close. Let's go ahead and drop our speed. Shouldn't take a long time to get our accuracy up. We're 27 kilometers right now. That stack keeps the captain warm in the North Sea. Nat, you're, you are not wrong, Nat. It, it could, except I, I would hope they would not put the, uh, the stack in front of the bridge. Lorne, <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? A British meme ship called the Boris Johnson. Oh, in honor of Brexit. That just happened tonight, didn't it? Oh, yes. That's actually a really good name for a British meme ship. I like that. We got our first hit. So far, we've only spotted three of his ten ships. Kilroy. Well, I don't think this one will leak radiation since it has oil for fuel and not... Uh... Let's get a look at it firing here. But spontaneous combustion, I suppose, could be a concern. Are you suggesting the Russians were not known for their great navy? <laughs> Sir, we can't see things through the smoke. That's okay, we have radar. It actually, you know, it looks pretty cool other than the stack being in front, but I wanted it that way. I mean, I guess I could have switched these two things. That probably would have worked, but you know what? I, I put the, the pagoda tower first. Once we had a pagoda tower on a Russian ship, it doesn't really matter what we do. We need to... I guess we need to change the angle just a little bit so we can we can get a couple of these wing turrets firing. They use political dissonance for fuel. That is sick and awesome at the same time. Paul, you are not wrong. Maybe I should go get... I have some vodka upstairs. Maybe I should throw some in my Mountain Dew Zero that I'm drinking right now. Give the meme ships AI control. I don't know. They, I'd probably lose if I do that. If it was a fair fight, maybe. I don't know. I guess we could do that and just see what they do. All right. Meme ships on AI control. We'll watch the Ivan the Terrible for a little while. And I'll just talk to you guys while we, we watch the movie. Let's go get a look at what's happening over here. Not much of a 1940 battleship, is it? A little disappointing, honestly. If this doesn't go well, we might have to go back and just swap out those 15s for 18s and see what happens. Shouldn't I be going the other way? <laughs> Well, I'm not going up against Japan, so I'm hoping I'll fare a little better against the, the mighty Austro-Hungarian Navy. I, 
gotta say, it's kind of interesting talking about sounds. Um, we'll go back and watch this for a little bit. You know, I've been playing uh, Panzer Corps 2, and I, I know probably one of the biggest complaints I'm hearing from many of you who watch is, uh, is the sounds on that game. Uh, and, I, and I have to agree. You know, compare this game in early alpha and, and the sound effects that it has versus the sounds on that game, which is, uh, I mean, it's in beta, it's not a full release yet, but still. Hanson, that's cool. You do model trains. Not sure what this turret's doing. He's he's moving. I don't know if he's gonna move around the other way, thinking that maybe he'll be able to fire on that side or something. He probably could fire over that other one. Almost like a super firing situation there if we were at the right angle. When the two inch open fire. Yeah, we'll have to get pretty close for that. What's their range? Six kilometers. We may not be that close for a while. I love watching the, the shells that deflect and they go spinning in the air. Looks like we're about to get our first sinking. Let's switch them over to HE and see what happens. Because they're starting to get hits now. I want to see if the HE has any better luck. Lauren, no, nothing on campaigns yet. I'm uh, really hoping that they have something soon. But I know the Alpha 4 is what they're working on right now, so they're mostly focused on more hulls and and uh, building parts rather than the campaign. I honestly haven't heard a thing about the campaign. Dynamo, yes, this is the Ivan the Terrible. It's my latest meme ship. Meme ship videos that I do, I know they're kind of silly and not particularly historical, but, but they by far get the most views of any of the Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts videos that I do. That's why I do them as often as I have. The historic ones and the historic battles, the historic ships tend to be much less viewed. Um, taking a while to sink any of these guys. Oh, did we switch targets? I hate when they do that. Let's see what these HEs do. I don't know if 15 inch HE is gonna do a lot. Yeah, Scarheart, I'm with you. The campaign, I don't know. In my mind, I, I mentioned this earlier, I imagine the campaign for this being like um, Rule the Waves. And if it's anything like that, which I would assume it would be, um, I think it'll be phenomenal. It's Rule the Waves with this kind of gameplay with the 3D. Um, it's exciting to think about the possibilities. When you get into the research and all that kind of stuff, it'll be it'll be pretty exciting. All right, we're gonna switch back to auto. They'll probably go AP. All right, we're taking AI off for now. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and turn toward these guys. Yes, Bond, uh, maximum armor is 50 inches. With two inch guns, we'd have to get super close and we'd have to go up against smaller ships because I'd never be able to take out uh, 1940 battleships with two inch guns. Oh, multiplayer mode would be fantastic. Um, could you imagine this? Even even just the uh, the custom battles, like give everybody a budget to work with, and then they can build whatever they want within that budget. The the multiplayer would be amazing. I'd love to. I still love to see that on Ultimate General Civil War. I wish they would have done that. They could do the same thing. Just give everybody a budget to work with, and then you can build your army however you want to. I think that would make 
that Ultimate General Civil War, one of the greatest games of all time, if it had that mode, like Ultimate General Gettysburg did. All right. Against 40 destroyers. <laughs> Yeah, let's take, how much ammo do we have? Oh, we got plenty of ammo. We got a thousand rounds. Uh, actually, two thousand total, 15 inch rounds. Plus I got the three inches and the two inches and then a bunch of torpedoes. But just to make this interesting, we are gonna start moving in close here. I don't know what Ivan the Terrible is doing, but we're actually gonna go ahead and go to a, a normal formation. Yeah, you do need um, the two main batteries, and they, I think, have to be at least 9-inch guns. I think that's the smallest you can go on the main guns. Oh, we took one. Wasn't even a, a big hit. Interesting. So now it's 2v9. Kilroy, you know, the only thing that's frustrating about, uh, first of all, thank you, um, my visit to the Peach Orchard is that right after I got back uh, from my visit to Gettysburg, I found out that my great-great-great-grandmother's brother, no, yeah, great-great-great-grandmother's brother, was in the Peach Orchard at Gettysburg. He was with the 57th Pennsylvania, which was in Graham's Brigade, which was the one that was that I even mentioned. They were at that apex of Sickles Line, uh, right there at the edge of the Peach Orchard. So they took the brunt. They took over 50% casualties. Uh, his name was Alfred Serby. He actually survived the battle. And his father, who's my great-great-great-great-grandfather, uh, was also at Gettysburg. He was with the, uh, 6th Pen or the 4th Pennsylvania Cavalry, and they were on... Uh, Cemetery Ridge. Uh, their monuments right there in Cemetery Ridge, not far from the Peach Orchard. Uh, so I can imagine what that was like for him, knowing, I mean, because he, he had to have been nearby, and knowing that his son was in the 57th Pennsylvania, and knowing how badly they were hurt, uh, they were decimated, uh, you know, just wondering whether his son survived that must have been agonizing. The HOI4 mod, um, which one are you talking about? The uh, the Great War? Because I just did a video yesterday on that one. Hey, Paul, I, I understand, man. Uh, have a good night. Sleep well. Glad you were able to join us. I'm not going to do go too, too much longer today anyway. Uh, we've been going for about an hour. I'll probably go maybe till this battle's done. I'm hopeful, depending on what happens tomorrow, I might be able to live stream again, but we'll see. Oh yeah, we could do aggressive on the torpedoes. I think we're in torpedo range now. If nothing else, we will cause them to have to change their maneuvering a little bit. Yeah, we're in torpedo range. Yep, we just launched some. Oh, the Prinz Eugen. Interesting that Austria-Hungary has a Prinz Eugen. End of a new beginning. Oh, I haven't played that in forever. Uh, once I get done with a few of my other series, yeah, we'll have to look at doing that again. Yeah, Kilroy, one of the things, I, I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the stream, is um, because I love both family history and history itself, one of my favorite things is to find my own family's personal connections to history. Um, because most of my family comes from Kentucky, uh, I don't have many connections to the Eastern battles. Uh, so I had two ancestors who fought in the armies in the East. Um, 
one is the one I mentioned already who was in the 4th Pennsylvania Cavalry and then his son-in-law who was my third great grandfather was in the 56th Pennsylvania Infantry uh, which fired the very first infantry shots for the Union Army at the Battle of Gettysburg uh, on July 1st. They were in Cutler's Brigade. Uh, so most of my family fought in Kentucky um, and a lot of the Kentucky units didn't venture much outside the state because there was so much fighting within the state between uh, Kentucky units on both sides. Uh, my main kind of connection to the big battles of the West is my uh, my fourth great grandfather Sam Hughes who was in the 20th Ohio and they were with Grant all the way from Fort Donelson through Shiloh, Vicksburg uh, and to the battles for Atlanta Kennesaw Mountain uh, and then he actually was discharged at the end of his three years uh, in November of 64 just before the 20th Ohio joined Sherman on the march to the sea why did I only do standard bulkheads? You know, I probably could have ramped those up, but I, I chose to use the weight for uh, for my deck and, and belt armor instead. Related to Albert Sidney Johnston, cool. Hey, Air Ray, take care, man. Wonder if any of these torpedoes will do anything. So many shells raining down. We're, we're in range of his secondaries now. So you got all the little ones coming down on me. But I just found out yesterday in listening to the, uh, the biography on General Grant that Logan's division was the first division into Vicksburg after it surrendered. And my ancestor, Sam Hughes, with the 20th Ohio was in Logan's division. So he was in the very first division that marched into the city on July 4th. So that was kind of exciting to find out. I haven't been to Vicksburg yet. I very much want to go there. So you can see them kind of getting out of formation now because of those torpedoes that's causing them to kind of that and the damage that's being done. Actually, several. Look at how many of his ships have taken damage. And then we start switching to other ones. We need to start actually getting some sinkings going here. Several of these ships are, are close. One, two, three, four. All four of them have taken major damage. There goes another one. I'm actually going to switch to the Rudolph. I want to... I want to get a couple more sinkings. Oh yeah, there I put them back on Ava, on AI a few minutes ago. Just for a little bit. You can see we have taken some damage on the lead ship. Oh, this could be interesting cuz maybe I missed one and hit the other in this case. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's going to happen quickly now, being as close as we are. I guess we can slow things down now. Go to a normal speed. Yeah, we're get, oh, we got to get closer so we can get those 3-inch guns to open up on him. We'll take it off AI. It takes a while to turn these things. I'll speed up while I turn. We're gonna come in straight at him. So Kilroy does. Uh, does that mean, um, I guess I could assume if they came from Ireland in the 1840s, that was probably uh, during the potato famine. And I would say there's probably a good chance uh, that your Irish ancestors fought in the Civil War. I mean, there was a pretty heavy contingent of Irish immigrants fighting. You have that poignant scene um, I mean, I can't imagine what it must have been like. The uh, You had an Irish unit 
on Marie's Heights at Fredericksburg, firing down on the Irish Brigade and the Union Army as they were charging up the hill, men who had come from the same country, fighting on opposite sides in the war. Hanson, that's cool, Austria. Um, my, my wife has her roots uh, on her mother's side in uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Uh, they were from Hungary. Yeah, a lot of my... Oh, he's running. He's running. Don't let him get away. As soon as we take out the Prince Oregon, we may have to fire on this one here. Yeah, Scarhart, that's what I just said. They, they did fight on both sides. And you know, you had uh, Northerners fighting in the Southern Army, Southerners fighting in the Union Army. Uh, a couple of examples of that. Um, Pemberton, John Pemberton, who was the Confederate who was in command at, at Vicksburg, who surrendered Vicksburg to Grant, was from Pennsylvania. And George Thomas, who was a Union general, was from Virginia. Oh, hey, we gotta watch the sinking here. I always wa like to watch a good sinking. All right, Naval Frontline, have a good night. Take care. Don't let them run, they're getting away. All the damaged ones are running for their lives. All right, we're gonna have to speed up so we can chase them down. I can't imagine with that much damage that he's gonna be able to get away. You know, I'm gonna start firing on that one. I'm just gonna fire on the lead ship that's trying to get away. Because we can always get up on these other guys with torpedoes. And then, of course, our 3-inch should be firing by now. How close are we? Now we're still 7.6 kilometers. Yeah, we're in 3-inch range. We're just not in 2-inch range yet. Chase him down. Oh, we got one way over here, too. Oh, don't worry, um, Hansen. Adolf was born in Austria, but I believe his family was German. Not that that necessarily means anything. They could have been interchangeable back a few generations, but uh, now we all have people we're related to we're not proud of. Actually, most of Adolf's living relatives are Americans. His, uh, his, his brother's family, I think they live in New York. In fact, I think Adolf's nephew was in the U.S. Navy during World War II. They changed their name to, like, uh, Stuart something or other. It's like a hyphenated name. And, the, and none of the, the remaining descendants of Adolf Hitler's brother I think have children. And I think it's just going to be that way and that line's going to die out. There we go. There, now we're now we're finding the range on the Ferdinand Max. Ah, naval front line, cool. Air Ray, yes, I was talking about um, some of my family that was in the American Civil War.
Come on, take this guy out. Just, you know, that's the thing with these battleships. Once you get them down so far on the damage, they don't want to die. We're going to go after these healthy ones, I think, just to finish them off before they do too much damage to me. All right, Nat, take care, man. I am at full speed trying to chase him down. But I've got a lot of damage to both of my ships. This should happen fast at this range with the number of ships that I'll, or guns that I'll have firing. It's interesting about Goering's nephew. I hadn't heard that. I'm going to have to look into that a little bit. That's kind of interesting. War Thunder. Oh, you know what? I'll have to do that sometime. I've got so many games I'm doing right now on my channel, but I do love War Thunder. It's a lot of fun. I, I play it mostly on the console right now. But that's something I could look into in the future. The Pew Pews are firing. We're super close to getting the two inchers in range, but you can see the little ones hitting. Come on, finish him. I think that might be enough. We've got, oh yeah, we've got all but, oh, every compartment flooded. That one's sinking. It's done. Next. Army Chow Main, you're right. I'm sure they will. Um, I mean, obviously, the Middle East wars aren't the scale of uh, American Civil War or uh, World War II, things like that. But, yeah, it's an interesting question. There, right, that's very cool. Have you seen... Um, I think Netflix has a brand new series out about the Ottoman Empire. I haven't started watching it yet, but I want to check it out. I'll be curious to see how historically accurate it is. No, I can't go anywhere close to full speed. I'm getting 17 knots right now. It looks like that's about the best I can do. But this was never about necessarily winning the battle. This is just meme ship action. We just wanted to see what was possible. That's a pretty cool name. Suplingenberg. Having, having served in the German or any army during World War II. Um, yeah, I, I don't see naval creed. I'll have to check that out. I don't see anything not to be proud of in having fought in the German army. Uh, I mean, unless you were in the SS. You know, if you were a Nazi, that's one thing. Um, but, you know, I actually know a man who, who served in the German army. He was, uh, I think he's Croatian. And... Um, you know, there's no reason for him to not be proud for that. He was fighting for his country. Um, didn't know what was going on with some of that stuff. And I think if you if you listen to interviews with many of the World War II veterans uh, who fought against the Germans, they, they largely felt the same way. I mean, in combat, sure, but uh, they understood that these were guys just doing their jobs, just like they were. All right, that's a very man. That's really cool. What a history to have. All right, how many are we down to here? We can still see five of them. I think there's probably another one out here somewhere. Let's 
think it just for the name. <laughs> I will do my best. It's running away too now. Everybody's running from the meme ships. back over to HE for a little bit. are happening a plenty. Have you ever tried meme cruisers? Uh, I have not. You know, the smaller ships are limited in their meme potential just because there's so little room to put things on them uh, other than what would have been standard for such a ship. HE definitely, for the most part, does more damage. It just gets to a place where the HE... The HE tends to be much more about the... Um, which, it makes sense, uh, does a lot of the structural damage. It doesn't necessarily cause the flooding to get a sinking. Especially since I have 15 inch guns, so I don't necessarily get the penetration I'd like. The AG seems to cause a lot of damage with the explosions. Kilroy, yeah, it was Shifty Powers who said that. He said, yeah, he and I might have been good friends back home. And Scarheart, they've actually... Um, They've actually toned down the HE some compared to where it was. I think with Alpha 3, they, they kind of nerfed it a little bit. All right. Everybody else is running, so now the hunt begins. I don't know if I'll be able to catch these guys as damaged as I am. We'll see if we can at least take out the Prince Eugen. 9.8 kilometers. Let's see if we close the distance at all. Ivan the Terrible will probably have to kind of take the lead here. Oh, we're getting some hits. There we go. No, don't follow. Just go steady. No, oh, we're going to take out the Prince Eugen. No, Scarheart, I probably do not have the speed to take them, take them out. I definitely didn't build these things with speed in mind, that's for sure. Prince Eugen's done. It's going to sink. I don't need a lot of hits to take out these other ones. Just a question of whether I can get them before they get too far away. The Budapest. Bon, I actually just did that. Um, well, it wasn't a maximum armored ship, but it was a ship with a bunch of uh, single turret 
batteries that uh, that sank. I sank 20 cruisers in four minutes. Was it 20? I think it was 20. And I started at a thousand meters in that one. Yeah, I would think uh, that the game will pretty much end around 1940 because uh, at that point, you know, carriers become the weapon of choice for navies. Goering's nephew. Um, I don't know if you can post a link, but if you can, uh, if it'll let you do that, go for it. I'll click on it once we're done with this battle. What formation am I in? Uh, I think I'm in the ahead formation, but, you know, it doesn't really matter at the moment because I'm actually... Um, I have them both. They're supposed to be separated. There we go. See if we can at least take out one or both of these ones. We're not going to get the others because they've already run to the point where I can't even find them without... I mean, I've got the radar, but I'll never track them down. Do I play World of Warships? Yeah, I've got a couple of videos. Um, my first attempts at the game are here on the channel. You can look those up. Um, I actually did a couple of World of Warship, Warships live streams. Come on, sink the Budapest. My wife's great-grandparents came from Budapest. Super Yamato, yes, I've uh, I've read some folks posting about that. We'll wait and see if we can sink one or two of these ships, and then I think we'll probably wrap this up. Not a whole lot more I'll be able to do. Ivan the Terrible is at 15.8 kilometers. It's got a little more speed left. Seeing the link, it may not have allowed you to post it. You could post it as a comment afterwards. Once this goes live, once we end the stream, it'll it'll go up on the channel. It might be a little while yet while it processes, but once it does, you could post it as a comment underneath there, and I can pin it. Area, I appreciate that. I've had this channel a little over three years, and then my daughter started one less than a year ago, and she's got almost 80,000 subscribers, but she's hilarious. She's really entertaining. Are they retreating? Ah, uh, they are. I guess that makes sense, given the damage that they've suffered. They're still firing, but yeah, they're retreating. All right, I think we're going to wrap this up here. Uh... Thanks, guys, for joining. I really appreciate it. I always love doing these live streams. I, I hope to be able to do more of them uh, in the near future as my work slows down and I'm not traveling as much. Uh, I love being able to interact with you guys in real time. So thanks a lot, and I'm going to go ahead and check out here. We'll see you again soon.